Welcome to the Agent Leader Podcast, the podcast for independent insurance agency leaders to gain clarity, build consistency, and to make a commitment to become their best version possible. And our book, Best Version Possible, is still out in the marketplace, and uh, we're getting some great feedback, and I always want to get this into our agency leaders' hands. So I think I do a reminder every single time, every podcast, but hey, uh, we're proud of the book and the feedback we're getting. So you can go to sitkins.com slash BVP, sitkins.com slash BVP to get a copy of that book. Also want to reference that we have officially launched the best version possible experience, um, which is an up level of our membership program. We're excited to announce this. Uh, certainly, you can reach out to my, me or my team to learn more about the uh, BVP experience. And you can go to sitkins.com slash experience to learn more about that. So we've got a fantastic session today. I, I haven't interviewed this gentleman before. We've had some many, many conversations in different ways, uh, but someone I've wanted to get on the podcast, um, A, because he knows his stuff, um, B, because he's just a great leader in the industry, and I think three, C, he gives a great perspective or have a great perspective. I'm seeing things maybe a little bit different um, in working with agencies and agency leaders throughout. So I'm going to leave it at that. That's my my intro. Uh, Tim Parenti uh, from First Insurance Funding is with me. Uh, and Tim, I'm going to just turn it to you so you can let our fine audience know about you, what you do. And hey, why should people listen to Tim? How's that? No pressure on you. Go. Well, if you, if you listen to my wife, she'll say there's no reason to listen to me. She's, <laughs> okay. she's had enough. But thank you, Brady. I appreciate uh, being part of this uh, great program and obviously being uh, uh, having a great connection with you and Roger over the years. Uh, uh, we've, we've formed quite the partnership. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, so, yeah, I'm uh, I'm with the First Insurance Funding. I'm the senior VP of sales. Been with uh, First for about 11 years. Ironically, uh, they were a client of mine. When I was in the consulting business going back uh, many years ago, and I ran their sales conference, and uh, after a while, they said, gee, we're kind of getting tired of renting you. What's it going to take to buy you? <laughs> and, uh, and as you know, Brett, everybody has their price. That's right. And uh, so, you know, I wasn't really eager to let go of my independence, being self-employed for 20 plus years, being a consultant, um, but you know, it had to be the right fit, and uh, they certainly fit the bill. Uh, and to this day, 11 years later, um, I'm, I'm not looking backwards in any way, only looking forward. Uh, uh, terrific decision uh, uh, and a great organization. Yeah, fantastic. How, can I ask again? I mean, we, I had a few questions I wanted you to think about, but how, how many agencies about do you guys work with across the country? Oh, gosh. I, I mean, over you know, 15 to 20,000 even, just quite a bit, pretty much any agency across the country. Uh, that does uh, commercial insurance premiums and, and needs financing. Yeah. So I just, you know, I mentioned at the beginning, this uh, in, an interesting perspective. And so Tim knows a lot of people, a lot of agencies. Um, and again, it's going to have, a, just, I think, a, a very unique thought. I know in our conversations, Tim, just outside of this and different events and things that we've talked, I've always got great value in listening to what you have to say. So I know the audience is going to get uh, a ton of value as well. Um, I want to start off and I, I never, you know, I always feel bad when I start off a question that's almost a, a negative type of question. But I, I, you know, you ask agency leaders, um, what are they struggling with, or what's a challenge that they have? Typically, they can start naming things off pretty quick. Um, you know, there's always challenges and frustrations. But again, from your perspective, Tim, what are some of the the key challenges or frustrations that you see independent insurance agencies and their leaders dealing with? And maybe you've got some ideas of, of how to, to to solve them or at least improve them to some degree. Yeah, I mean, they're the usual suspects, right? Uh, it's uh, finding talent is pretty much always at the top. Uh, but that's not specific to the insurance industry, right? That's specific to pretty much industry, any industry across the country. So, um, uh, and of course, organic growth. And of course, uh, being able to get into the markets they want to get into. So it's kind of like a, it's a catch 22. They, they want to be able to get into the markets and have access to better pricing and, and all. But at the same time, they want to remain independent. Well, as you know, with the with all the M and A going on, it's like you want one thing, but you can't really get it until you do something that maybe you don't want to do. Right. So it's a little bit of a conundrum for them. Um, the other thing I, I, that I'm finding out is uh, I, I'm finding that agencies are are far more selective for the right reasons about who it is they want and choose to do business with. Mm. Um, it's all about the extras because uh, it, it's 
It's not just, you know, can you get, can I get insurance? It's like, what can I get in addition to insurance? Can I, what kind of safety programs? What type of uh, checkpoints are we going to have? What type of uh, additional consulting services? So they want, they want vendors who can see beyond the daily function of what their organization does and sees the organization as a big picture. And we're seeing the same thing with obviously the, uh, the insurance space. Uh, they're looking for trusted advisors. I mean, it's a, it's a different world today than it was 10 years ago. Um, heck, even five years ago, if you want, or if you want to include COVID in there <laughs> two years ago, uh, it's a whole different ball game. So they're, they're looking to align themselves with organizations that um, have a pulse on the bigger picture of what they need, as opposed to, in our case, uh, the microscopic portion of an agency's need, which is uh, uh, premium finance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's some great, great points there, Tim. And I'm even, I'm just looking at my notes. I'm trying to scribble down as you're sharing a lot of great information there. But I mean, obviously the finding talent thing, you're right. It's it's true, you know, in every industry, but certainly it's one of the things we continue to hear. And I've been at you know, several events the last few weeks and, you know, I just keep writing down people, 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 people. And um, <laughs> you look at the, the recent best practice study, it was in big capital letters, you know, the biggest concern is people. And I, I had to laugh as you were talking about some of the, you know, it's either this or that or whatever it may be. And, you know, I always tell independent insurance agency leaders, I said, you know, the best thing about being independent is you're independent. (laughs) I said, here's the problem. The worst part about being independent is you're independent, right? (laughs) A lot of choices, a lot of decisions to make because you do get to create the the business model. And um, one more thing that to piggyback on what you said, um, and Roger has said this before in some of our, our trainings, we've talked about this as the landscape changes. And I'm not exactly sure even where this came from, but he said, and this was a a different industry, but I think there's some truth of what we're seeing in insurance. He said, what you get paid for, right? What you get paid for, you may have to begin to do for free. And some of that's the transaction stuff in insurance. Mm -hmm. He goes, what you currently do for free may be the only way you get paid, which was the extra resources and the service and being that indispensable risk partner, right? Because the the transaction, the transfer of risk, well, a lot of a lot of buttons and clicks can do that, but it's what what surrounds that, right? The value with back to the people. So I appreciate you sharing that. I think it's a really important uh, topic. Um, well, let me let me flip a little bit to the good stuff, and you shared some things. But what what you know what have you seen from your experience, Tim? When you think about some maybe the the best agencies you work with, or some of those that are having a high level of, of success, what is it that they're doing? What do you see out there? Well, you know, there's a lot, but the one that's really stood out to me uh, in the last year and a half, uh, I would use one word, and that is patience. Mm. And the best agencies right now, I think, are not looking for quick fixes. They're not going out there and just hiring an, an account executive from another agency, you know, doubling their pay and just plugging them in there. They're seeing the big picture. They know that that doing that model is not sustainable. In fact, they become vulnerable to the next agency that wants to, wants to come in and pluck that same account executive that yep. you pluck from somebody else. Yep. So I, I'm seeing people uh, that are real, the, the top ones are willing to go outside the industry and hire people that don't have any industry experience, but they have something that can't always be taught uh, and it can't necessarily, in some cases, be coached. And that is finding people as a bit of a cliche with the right attitudes, the right mental mindset, yep. and those who possess sound emotional intelligence. And those two factors really help bridge the other challenge that I think agencies do experience when they do go out and they, they buy uh, producers or they're buying account executives or frontline staff, and that's culture. Mm. It's culture. I mean, one of the most prized possessions the best agencies have are uh, an adherence to their culture and being inflexible in who they are and what they stand for. When you bring somebody in from the outside, from another uh, agency, let's say, that can potentially not always be compromised. So what I'm seeing a lot of people go out and they're hiring people that have the right attitude, the right mindset, and they're willing to invest in the long game. And say that, you know, we can teach them insurance, we can get them their license, we can do all those things, but they're willing to be patient with it. And and behind that, not only do they do that, they have a really, really uh, strong, robust coaching and mentoring programs behind them. So it's not just the training, it's the coaching, it's the mentoring, it's it's being tagged. So they're building a long-term 
uh, employee workforce, which ultimately then becomes when the word gets out, now all of a sudden people go, wow, I didn't know anything about this industry. They took a chance on me. And people who possess really strong cultural, moral values usually hang out, you know, like attracts like, right? And so now that, that philosophy becomes your best recruiting tool. So they say to their friends and their neighbors and that, that are like them, hey, here's where I'm working. I knew nothing about it. They've really helped me out. It's a great industry. And, uh, and one, one, one success solves another challenge. Mm. A lot of good nuggets there. I hope uh, if the listeners, Tim, if they're not driving, they could take a few notes there of what you just said, because there's a lot of wisdom in that. And I do have a, a follow-up question or maybe two on what you just said, because I'm thinking in the minds of an agency leader. It's like, okay, I, I get that. I think I'm with you here, but, but what else? I, I, the, what hit me, it's, it's interesting. We, um, we have a campaign, Tim, at Sidkins, um, and this is not a, an official campaign. This is an internal campaign that we kind of joke about, but we say with agencies, you got to stop the gimmick of the month club. <laughs> and, you know, it's just like, oh, here's the next new thing that's going to be the magic pill, whatever you want to call it. Right. And you're right. I, I just, um, you know, I, I think I referenced earlier, I've had uh, two or three different mastermind groups or organizations of leaders I've been around in the last month or two. And it's interesting, although the topic of people and what you just said comes up a lot, there are certain agencies that have really done what you said. They were patient. They have focused a lot on culture what they stand for, what they don't stand for. Um, and they're going, yeah, it's tough, but we're retaining most of our people. We're, we're attracting other people. In fact, some of our best people are attracting our best other people, you know, and just exactly what you said. So it's it's very interesting. Now, I do want to ask, and I don't know if you have, you know, this is probably a tough question and, and there may not be a direct answer to it, but I want to get your thoughts anyway. Um, you talked about, you know, emotional intelligence and some of those characteristics that may not be insurance and that you can teach people insurance. What have you seen agencies or have you seen agencies been able to, how, how do they, how do they find those type of people? Like what, what are they looking for? Um, I mean, I, it's a pretty broad question. Again, I don't want to put you on the spot, but have you seen any trends where, you know, okay, we don't need someone with insurance knowledge, but we're looking for this and this, and this is how we kind of know this is the person we're looking for. Yeah, th there's a there's really no magical place, but there are a few that usually come up. Um, I know one individual uh, that uh, every time he goes to a restaurant, he doesn't go there to eat; he goes there to recruit. Right. Because if the, you know, you think about the environment, they're juggling multiple tasks. They are dealing with difficult customers. Uh, they have to be polite, even in the face of of difficult times. And those are all characteristics. And they're essentially it's it's a live job interview right then and there. Yeah. And I've seen them uh, several times pull out a business card and say, hey, if you ever decide that you want to do something different, here we are. So I'm sure that's not new to any of the listeners, but that's a big one. Uh, another one is, you know, a lot of people, you know, if culture matters, um, a lot of people like to just recruit people from their church. <laughs> they, share, they share the same denomination, uh, this, the, the, those same uh, ethical values and mores. Um, chances are they're going to have a pretty strong run of that. So they'll recruit from, from their local church. Uh, so those are the two primary ones, and I'm sure there, there's countless others, but those are the two that come to mind. Oh, that's great. And, and you know, I used to say, it's like, oh, yeah, maybe I thought about that. But I think people lose focus. And, you know, I actually told my um, I told my daughter, who's now a freshman in college, um, and she's worked different jobs. But I've told us other people, too, young people. I'm like, you know, because you get people in college or whatever, and they're like, well, this isn't my career. And they're working this job. I'm like, you never know who's watching. You know, if, <laughs> if, you know, if you have got the right personality, you work hard. I mean, let's face it, that's hard to find <laughs> sometimes today. So you find that you want to grab onto it. And I think the biggest thing is just, I love what you said there, but it's like for agency leaders, if, if you're looking to attract people, it's like antennas are always up. I'm always, I'm always thinking of I mean, looking around and going, hmm, hmm. Because by the time you really desperately need someone, it becomes really hard. So like this constant, like let's continue to build that network and say, hey, I don't know if now is a good time, but I, there's something there I might want to share with you. So I, I love that. Um, Tim, I want to I want to get to know a little bit more about you and your firm because you guys do, again, so many things, obviously known for financing, but I know it's more than that um, and the impact you have on agencies. So I want to give you the mic here and kind of share some stuff that you all do at First Insurance Funding, maybe some things that people know. Maybe some things that people don't know that that could add value to agencies out there. 
Yeah, um, you know, we got to face the facts. Uh, it, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to really do premium finance. Anyone who can fog America can pretty much do premium finance. Oh, come on, Tim. Um, it's harder than that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it does take a little bit of something extra, depending on the metric that you use. We're either number one or number two in the entire country. So obviously, things like rates and terms, we're always going to be competitive. So we try to look beyond that. Uh, so the number one factor that people like about what we do, and I mentioned, mentioned this earlier, is that we look beyond the day-to-day -day functions of the agencies. We try to become a resource for them. Um, we're owned by a bank. And um, you know, any agency is either you know uh, is is looking to either acquire another agency or acquire producers. They have some some banking challenges, and we provide that service to them at, at our personal expense. Uh, gives them another fresh set of eyes, uh, and in many cases, we've had pe people come to us with deals from their bank, and we'll look at it and say, "Hey, you got a great deal, go for it." Or in some cases, we'll say, "We can't take this kind of business, but here's a few questions to ask your own bank or your mm -hmm. own banker, and uh, and maybe you can, we can help you get a better deal than what you're already getting, even though we have no interest in doing it." So the question is, why would we even do that? Well, we're very objective in our relationship. We care about. Uh, this is definitely a philosophy of ours. We care about the, the health of the agency in the aggregate, not just the small sliver that we call premium finance, because we think that's really what dictates uh, a true partnership. Uh, so we, we, have, we do uh, agency lending. Uh, it's, again, if they want to uh, buy another agency, they want to buy a producer's book. And um, it will help in that respect. In fact, we, we were the first premium finance company that started doing that. And I think we did, it started about 15 years ago. One of the agencies that we were working with brought it up as an idea. And we said, wow, we, you know, we, we never really thought about that, but let's check into it. So we talked to our parent company, Wintrust, the bank, and they said, yeah, I think we can do this. And so we started with zero in premium finance lending about 15 years ago. And I think we're up to almost, almost uh, I think a half a billion. So we do quite a bit of that. We have an appetite for that. Um, and it's definitely in our wheelhouse. So that's why that's one thing that people really like about us. Um, the other thing that people really like about us, again, is can we take a holistic view of mm -hmm. an agency? Well, if you look at the three primary players in an agency, you've got the leadership team, you've got the producer sales team, and you got the frontline team, AEs, AR, uh, 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 AMs, and CSRs. So when I came in, I, I looked at this business called premium finance, and I said, wow, this is a really selfish business in the sense that, you know, our clients probably, we need them a lot more than they need us, right? We're out there begging for loans. Please send us a loan. Please send us a premium finance loan. And my, my th thinking was, I thought that was a pretty selfish relationship. So I said, what if we could, you know, the Bible talks about the law of reciprocity. What if we could balance things out where we could give things back to our clients, our agency partners, in return, in addition to premium finance, things that they that they want, but don't know where to get it. Uh, they want, but don't know if they can afford it, or they want, and they don't know if it's any good. <laughs> so we thought, what if we could bring all of these services to them, training to, uh, and development for the AEs, AMs, CSRs, uh, for the leadership team and producers, training that we provide at our personal expense, um, that all has nothing to do with premium finance. It's a very objective commitment to the overall health of their agency. And that's been really effective. In fact, in my prior world, I used to do a lot of uh, executive overviews where I would sit down with boards, uh, I'd sit in meetings, and I'd do a full executive overview about, uh, about their organization. So we've done some executive overviews for agencies around the country as well, which gives them a nice uh, unbiased a uh, snapshot of the, the overall health of their agency, whether it's personalities, the structure of the board, the structure of their business, et cetera. So that's been, that's been very fun and very fruitful. fruitful. Uh, I love that. I think that's, I mean, obviously what's why I've enjoyed getting to know you, talking to you, learning about, you know, what you all do, because yeah, obviously there's, you know, there's a transfer and there's some of the stuff that you do from a financing perspective, but um, you know, this is something that, you know, Tim, that what you guys do is something we talk with agencies about is, you know, so often people will come in and go, how do I complete this transaction, so to speak, or close this sale? Mm -hmm. And, 
you know, what you're really asking and not, you know, I'll put words in your mouth, but we tell this for agencies is how can I help you move your business forward? Right. And, and, and that, that may be yeah. more than just, you know, some of those things. Did you want to comment on that? Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, what I try to mention to other agencies is you have to premium, premium finance anyway, right? You have to use somebody. Yep. So we just say, as long as you got to use somebody, you might as well get something extra for it, right? Yep. <laughs> I mean, if you could buy, use a simplistic uh, observation, if you can buy your car at, at, at X dealership and it's just a car, or you buy your car at Y dealership and you get a free oil change and you get a free car wash, and they'll pick up your dry cleaning once a month. You know, a clean car is a clean car and you get all the extra at no cost to you. It seems like a no-brainer to us. Uh, it seems pretty easy. Yeah. Uh, and that really goes to, you know, our, our culture. I mean, that's just the way our culture is. In fact, back in 2013, uh, the president uh, of, of First Insurance Funding, Frank Burke, came up to me and he, he said, Tim, I've been walking around the office and I'm, I'm hearing too many no's. Like, no, we can't do that. No, we can't do that. And he goes, that's, I, I just don't want that to be our, our philosophy. Our philosophy should be, let, let's check into it. So he had me design a training class for the internal team. And it was called Just to Say Maybe. And, <laughs> and the point was, it was just a simple training just to kind of reprogram their thinking that, hey, maybe with a fresh set of eyes, maybe with additional information, maybe with a, a bigger focus on the big picture, there is a possibility. So that's just the culture. We really don't want to turn anything away. We want to make something happen for our clients, with both the agencies and the agency's customers. Uh, and it was really a very well received, a kind of a little hokey at first, but at the end of the day, it gave yeah. people the, the, you know, the opportunity like, hey, maybe I shouldn't be so closed minded. Maybe there is a way to do it. Yeah, I, I, I love it. I mean, I, you know, sometimes there's always that balance between what works and what's hokey, but hey, if it works, it works. And um, you know, that's a big part of culture. And I think, you know, what you said there, Tim, too, is I always think you know, there's, there's an abundance mentality in thinking and there's scarcity mentality in thinking. And I just, <laughs> I love talking to people thinking abundance, not of, it can never work, but how will it work? How could we make it work? What can we do differently? Right. Those are, those are great questions. Um, yeah. I, I want one, the one other thing I was going to mention, and I, and it's sorry to interrupt you, but no. um, it's also our technology, right? I mean, everybody says that we have the technology, uh, we've been first to market with a lot of technology that's out there right now, and we're still leading the charge. Uh, so the question becomes why, right? So the why is if, if you interview any, uh, I remember you and I were at a meeting one time with Angela Adams when she was mm -hmm. presenting. And I said, Angela, how many of the AEs, the AMs, and CSRs say to you, gee, I just got way too much time on my hands. I'm, I'm really <laughs> bored. Yeah, yeah. And of course, we all got a laugh out of it. She said yeah. never. So what we do is we try to build our technology uh, in concert with a, a focus user group. And the whole objective of it is, of course, is to make them as efficient as possible, minimize keystrokes as much as possible, uh, to make, and, and also which improves um, uh, quality, right? Mm -hmm. And so we, we definitely spend a lot of time on our technology, making it very easy uh, for the agency to streamline their, their work and their operations. So uh, they can get on to other parts of the business. So we become, they become big fans of us because we make their life a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. That's, I'm glad you mentioned that. And, and um, you know, one of the things that I believe in, I, I think you're probably sharing this belief, but, you know, I always ask agencies, like, is it still a relationship business? Like, yes, of course, of course it is. Um, and I think sometimes technology, well, first of all, it's either misused or it's just not allocated or, or you're or trained properly or whatever. But those that use it, I always say, you know, if you can leverage technology to build relationships, you're really making things happen to where the technology is happening and you're utilizing it and you're making it efficient so that you can be a human being and do some of the things that computers never can do. And so, you know, what you're doing with that, Tim, is you're freeing agencies up to be able to be that human being, to be the risk advisor, to ask other questions, to show empathy, to have collaboration, which by the way, computers aren't very good at. <laughs> um, versus I'll just click and all that stuff that technology can take care of. So I, I, I'm really glad you shared that. Um, are you ready for the last question, Tim? And this is the most important I, question. Sure. I mean, hopefully they've all been important questions, but this one, whew, this is the big one. So, um, and by the way, I'm, 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 I'm going to kind of set you up here too. If, if there's any way, if I can get maybe two answers out of this, one from Tim and one from your alter ego, I would really <laughs> think that would be cool. Um, but here's the question. I ask this to all of my guests that come on, Tim, so you're not the first, but if you were, if you were having a conversation, so you, you, 
you come face to face to the young, younger, I don't know how much younger you want to go. Let's say 20, 25 years. I don't know. But the younger Temperenti. And there he is, young Tim looking at you today, Tim. And he looks up at you. I guess he would probably still look across from you. I don't know if you've gotten <laughs> taller. But he looks at you and he says, hey, Tim, you know, you've been doing this for a while. You're ahead of me. What's one piece of advice, the one piece of advice you would share with me before we have to leave? What would you say? Ooh, well, to my younger self and maybe to other younger selves is don't let other people uh, de determine or define what success, air quotes, looks like. Uh, be your own barometer of what success looks like. Uh, Steve Jobs did not go to look at a template and say, oh, this is what success is. He created it. Uh, the guy who created Napster, same thing. That guy, Mr. Zuckerberg, who created Facebook, same yeah. thing. They had their own vision. They were going to determine what success meant, and they weren't going to do it according to anybody else's uh, impressions, uh, impulses, thoughts, or feelings. They were going to be their own barometer. In fact, a great story about that, and I know you're, you're a voracious reader like I am, Brent. Um, if you, you might recall that Fred Smith, the founder of FedEx, mm -hmm. uh, his senior college paper was a thesis on a business plan that we all know called Federal Express. Hmm. Um, he got a D on his report. The, teacher, the professor said, wait, this will never work. So, you know, when I, when I hear stories like that, we just know what will never work. That's why, you know, if I had to bring it full circle at First Insurance Funding, we're always we're always pushing the boundaries of what is possible. We're, you know, it sounds cliche, but we just are never satisfied. It's meeting after meeting about what's new, what's next, what's going on in the industry, and, uh, and paying very close attention to what's keeping business leaders, CFOs, and the frontline staff uh, up at night and, and doing whatever we can to put our resources to work to make that uh, a little less daunting uh, for them. Uh, I, I, I've asked that question a lot and I get a variety of answers. I love that uh, for so many reasons. And as you were saying that, Tim, it's like, um, and again, you can give countless examples, but you know, like every great idea, now there's probably been many bad ones too, but every great idea, right? I mean, it started in someone's mind. They sat there and that it didn't exist before. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I love that about, you know, don't let people define your success. Oh, you could never do that. It's not been done that way before. Yeah, just wait. Right. And it, it actually comes back at what we said earlier, right, with the with uh, the culture of your company. Maybe just maybe. Right. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> maybe I'll prove you wrong. Maybe I won't. <laughs> but guess what? I'm going to try. And I think that's that's such a powerful thought. So, you know, you know I, what they say? You know what they say, though? Um, uh, if. If you want to listen to what other people have to say, let me tell you something. That in a nickel will get you nothing more than a hot cup of Jack Squat. <laughs> you hey, wanted it? There it is. I got it. I'm so happy now. <laughs> and if you didn't know, I'm sure you. hopefully you're all laughing now with that. Tim's alter ego, Matt Foley there in a van down by the river. Right, Tim? <laughs> Uh, I got to share something. So Tim attended one of our uh, in-person networking events. Oh, it's probably been three years ago now because it was before COVID. It might have been right, right when it kind of started. It was started. March 2020. Okay, March 2020. So it was like the last thing that we did at that point for a while. Um, and we had a, we had a nice group of Asians. Some couldn't make it for obvious reasons, but we were sitting outside in the pavilion and beautiful Cape Coral, which of course now has been damaged by the hurricane and everything. But there was uh, Tim sitting down there, and he breaks into Matt Foley, and boy. We had 30, 40, 50 people, all eyes and ears and just hysterically laughing. And so uh, I love, Tim, not only what you brought today, but your personality, your fun, your engaging. And I know you do a lot for agencies out there. So thank you for coming on and being part of this. Any last words? And, and you know, where can people find you? Obviously, you're in a lot of agencies. I'm sure people can find you. But anything else you want to share, Tim, for the audience before we, uh, we leave? Well, thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. Yeah, I just... Uh... Uh, you know, we we care about the agencies. It's one thing to, to say it, but, you know, uh, deeds speak a lot loud, louder than uh, than than words. Um, we're happy to help you out. There's even uh, you don't have to necessarily be a client of first to, 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 to use uh, at least my services to help you out with. If nothing else, kick the tire, see what it's about. Um, the one thing that we do different than than, let's say, carriers, for example, when carriers come in, uh, they want to help you. 
uh, but they want to help you sell their product, <laughs> move their product, talk about their product. Uh, we, when we come in and we try to help, we don't even mention premium finance. We're very objective. Whatever it is we can do to help, we're doing it because it makes sense to help. Uh, you, can, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, feel free to reach out. And um, again, if you're listening to this podcast, you already know about the Sitkins Group, but we are big fans. Uh, we proudly endorse everything that they do. If you're not using them, uh, please do. If you are using them, uh, use them more. <laughs> I keep keep going, Tim. You're doing great. No. Um, listen, thank you again. And again, I knew you get some great insight being on the podcast today. And uh, as a reminder to all the audience, again, uh, a lot of things you can check out with us. And, and by the way, um, if you haven't, I haven't mentioned this for a while, but you know, we want to continue to grow this podcast. And it is it is a free resource we provide to agencies out there that want to just take a listen and learn from people like Tim and other agencies. I brought Roger Sitkins on many times. Sometimes I just go on rants, uh, Tim, on things that are that are happening, but it's all with the heart of, of service to help people and, and to grow. Uh, so if you could rate or review this podcast, it's adding value to you. We'd appreciate that as well. So with that, I want to thank you, Tim, and wish you as agency leaders all the best in your success. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Brent. Godspeed. The Agent Leader Podcast is brought to you by the fine folks of the Rough Notes Company. They are publishers of the insurance industry's leading magazine and technical insurance content. Rough Notes Magazine profiles successful agencies plus keen insights from respected experts on a host of must-know topics. Rough Notes Advantage Plus provides the tools to help your agency grow, providing authoritative information on complex coverage issues. Visit them and learn more at roughnotes.com.